One of the most common complaints you hear from scientists who don't believe in God is the presumption of intelligent design stifles research into how things work. These are just a few of the many scientists whose belief in intelligent design inspired them to uncover the works of the Lord. But what about the presumption of evolution? Has it stifled research into the functions of the human body? Has the presumption of vestigial organs stifled research that might have saved thousands of lives? In the 20th century, evolutionary presumption proved disastrous for people who had organs removed or who had organs subjected to radiation because they were thought to be vestigial. Here are a few of the so-called vestigial organs that evolutionists have since recognized as important to human health. In the 1930s, over half of children in the United States had their tonsils removed. People who had their tonsils removed are three times more likely to suffer from Hodgkin's disease. Scientists now recognize the tonsils as the human body's first line of defense in fighting inhaled or ingested bacteria and viruses. In addition, tonsils are made of lymphoid tissue, which manufactures antibodies that fight against invading diseases. In the last 25 years, the lymphatic system, which includes the tonsils, the thymus gland, and the spleen, has taken center stage in the search for a cure for cancer. No scientist today disputes the importance of these organs. Yet, evolutionists once thought that these organs were useless and identified them as vestigial. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know that the thymus gland is the master gland of the immune system. Doctors are now reluctant to remove the thymus for fear the patient will suffer severe immunodeficiency and high susceptibility to infection. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know the spleen is a vital part of the immune system and functions in the destruction of redundant blood cells. Doctors are now reluctant to remove the spleen because of the increased risk of infection. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know the pituitary gland plays a vital role in human growth, blood pressure, aspects of pregnancy, breast milk production, sexual functions, and the conversion of food into energy. Doctors are now reluctant to remove the pituitary gland because it would leave the patient without a functioning endocrine system requiring lifelong hormone treatments. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know the adrenal gland produces hormones involved in the control of blood pressure, chemical levels, water, and glucose functions of the body. Doctors are now reluctant to remove the adrenal gland as the patient may require lifelong hormone treatments. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know the lacrimal gland produces tears to lubricate the surface of the eyeball and the conjunctival pocket. Lacrimal gland tears have an antibacterial action, one of their components being lysozyme. Doctors are reluctant to remove the lacrimal gland as the patient would not be able to make tears, resulting in eye discomfort and potential damage to the eye. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know the pineal gland produces melatonin, a hormone that affects the modulation of sleep patterns, sexual activity, and seasonal body rhythms. Doctors are now reluctant to remove the pineal gland as the patient would no longer produce melatonin. Once thought to be a vestigial organ, scientists now know the pancreas produces important enzymes for food digestion. The pancreas produces insulin and glucagons which regulate the level of glucose in the blood. Doctors are reluctant to remove the pancreas as the patient would not be able to produce insulin and would require lifelong insulin treatments. In the beginning of the 20th century, scientists identified 180 different vestigial organs or vestigial parts in the human body. Today, five or six organs are still cited as vestigial by some scientists. 
The most famous of these is the appendix. Even today, the appendix is cited in textbooks as the best example of a vestigial organ. But physiologists have known for quite some time the importance of the appendix. A report came out in 2008 with results of 18 published studies showing that people who have had their appendix removed are six times more likely to develop Crohn's disease within a year of the operation and around twice as likely to develop Crohn's disease one to four years after the operation. According to a study published in 2007 in the Journal of Theoretical Biology, one function of the appendix seems to be the retention of useful bacteria. Sometimes all the flora of bacteria in the intestines dies or is purged. Diseases such as cholera or amoebic dysentery clear the gut of useful bacteria. One of the jobs of the appendix, which cannot be performed by any other organ, is to reboot the digestive system. The appendix acts as a good safe house for bacteria, said Duke surgery professor Bill Parker, the study's co-author. Its location, just below the normal one-way flow of food and germs in the large intestine, is a sort of cul-de-sac, he said. The worm-shaped organ outgrowth acts like a bacteria factory cultivating the good germs. In an urban area, if a person's gut flora dies, it can usually be repopulated easily with germs picked up from other people. But before dense populations in modern times, and during epidemics of cholera that affected a whole region, it wasn't as easy to grow back that bacteria and the appendix came in handy. Even today, in rural areas, the appendix serves the important function of keeping alive useful bacteria in emergency situations. In the October 1999 issue of Scientific American, Lauren G. Martin, professor of physiology at Oklahoma State University, reported on the current understanding of the functions of the appendix. He said, for years the appendix was credited with very little physiological function. We know now, however, that the appendix serves as an important role in the fetus and in young adults. 